Hello all, this is the third video in step-by-step -step setup of Oracle 19C Data Guard and in this particular video, we will be seeing how to add the second standby, not the third standby, the second standby. So we will configure multiple standbys. In the first video, we set up the primary and standby and Data Guard was enabled. In the second video, we saw how to configure the broker and fast start failover. And in this particular video, I will configure the multiple standby. Everything about my setup and everything is explained in the first video, so I'll not repeat it. This is how our environment will look like. So the primary and the first standby is already been set up, and now I'm configuring the second standby. The 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 unique the, apart from the unique name, everything remains same. Aura P is the primary on node one or DB one. Aura S is the first standby on DB two, and Aura T. The DB unique name or RT will be the second standby on DB3. So these are the three different boxes running three different databases or RP or S and or RT running on node one, running on node two and running on node three. So as I mentioned, primary and first standby is done. And in this particular tutorial, tutorial we'll see the second standby. So we will have a multiple standby data guard environment. To do this, what we will be doing is we will be so copying the P file from the primary to the standby and editing the p file in the p file we will change the two parameters it's it's mentioned here uh, i did not mention in the document but it's mentioned here we need to replace the aura p with aura chi so only two changes and local listener to db3 these are the only two changes that we'll be doing in init aura file apart from that no other changes then we will be starting the standby database in no mod mode then we will be using the rman active duplication and we will be using the primary database as target the standby database will be connected as all auxiliary the we will use rman duplicate target database for standby command this makes our life easier and it restores the database for the data guard configuration then we will be creating the standby control file we will be setting the data guard parameters on the new added or third standby second standby or archi we will be starting the mrp process once that is done we will also set the data guard this particular database in the data guard environment so we will enable this particular data environment a database in the broker configuration as well so let's do that okay let's get started so what we need to do is i'll connect to the node one i don't need to connect to the node two so i'll leave the node two for now and i'll connect to the node three so the white screen is node 3, the green screen is node 1. Now, what I'll do is uh, first thing that we need to do. So let me go. Uh, we need to let me follow the document actually. So set the RINV environment before set that it won't work. So we need to add an entry in the ETC or a tab. So let me add the entry for that particular database in the ETC or a tab why all of this are there let me clean okay so that's done i'm going to add an entry here so i've added an entry for this particular database so that's done so i added an entry in etc aura tab for the database so that we can set the aura env environment so we have done that now i will set aura env aura so that's done then what i will do is I will copy, I will go to the Oracle Home DBS location and I'll copy this from the node one. So let's see if we have any files over there. So CD to this location, LS minus L, you can see that I do not have any files in the DBS location on the third node, the, the second standby node. Now, what I'll do is I'll go to the primary and I'll send these two files. So let's, before doing that, I need to go to Oracle Home. So I'll run all these three commands together on the first node so that's done that's done that's done and now if i come here i should be able to see i got init aura file and aura password file the init aura file i have already captured here we need to do only two changes we'll replace aura p with aura t for the db unit name and i'll change the local listener to db31522 so these are the only two changes that i will be doing in in this particular file no other changes are required. So let's go to DB unique name, which is here, and let's replace it with Orachi. So that's a done and local listener replace it with host name, which is three. So that's done. Now I'll save this file. 
So let me cat this particular file and just show you the two changes that I have done. So local, why did I give it in the capital? Okay, local listener DB3 1522. So the DB3 is host port 1522. And the next chain that I have done is the DB unique name. So I'll grab for that here. And you should be able to see the DB unique name is or RT. So those two changes I have done in init or our file. So that's done. Now, next thing that we need to do is we need to start our database in no mod mode. Since there is no SP file by default, it's going to use this init aura. I can use this particular command where I can say, I can say startup no mod oracle home init aura. So I can specify the P file name. Or even if I don't specify by default, it's going to use this file because this is the only file present here. There is no P SP file. So this is the only file that's going to use. So either way, whatever you want to do, whether you want to use, you want to specify the P file name or whether you just want to do the startup no mount, both should be fine. Before doing that, what I will also do is I will create this directories. Otherwise, we will get an error. So these directories are created. This is the directory where the database is going to restore. This is the FRA directory. This is the archival directory. And this is the directory for audit dashed, audit dashed location so that's done now what i have not done is i have not at configured the listener on this so if you can see i'll go to the listener location so cd dollar oracle home slash networks slash is it admin network or network slash admin i always get confused ls minus l and you can see the listener file is there but that is okay so okay so the listener is there but it is wrong okay so the listener what i'll do is i'll go to you know i'll actually why to complicate things i'm going to remove this listener i could use the netca utility to configure the listener but rather than i'll just transfer the listener file from here so let me go to so let me go to the node one scp listener dot aura to node three and give the path so that's done i will come here clear my screen vi listener dot aura and here because we transfer it from the db1 so we will change the node name to db3 no other changes are required so we'll just do this so no other changes are required. So I'm using the same port 1522 on all three. So the listener configuration on all three nodes is exactly same. You don't have to use the same name. The listener v19 stand for it's a listener for v19 databases. So that's how I have set it up, but you can use any name that's not mandatory. Then the listener configuration is done. The next step is the TNS names.ora. So if you see here, there is no TNS names.ora file. Again, what I'll do is I will make my life easier. So I'll take this particular file. I will add an entry in this particular file for aura T. So I, so I'm going to add an entry for aura T. So replace with T and this particular name i'm going to change it to three because aura t is on node if you see the entries are exactly same aura p is on node one port 1522 aura s is on node two port 1522 aura t is on node three 1522 same listener configuration need to exist on all three nodes so what i will do is again i will use my shortcut i'm going to do the scp of tns names dot aura file to the node 3 so that's done and i will also do the same thing on node 2 otherwise i have to manu manually edit so i've done that so you can see that was no tns names dot aura file now the tns names dot aura file has appeared from the node 1 and i'm not going to change it there is no need to change everything all the entries for the primary the first standby and the second standby is there in this particular DNS names .ora. copy the same file on all three nodes make sure your dns names .ora file is in sync that makes life easier you know so that's how you make sure that your you do not mess up with your dns names .ora and every copy on every server is exactly same 
So that's done. Okay, we have configured the TNS name dot aura file on the primary, the first standby, and the second standby. So that's done. The, we have al already transferred the the TNA, the init aura file, and we changed two parameters: aura p with aura g for the db unit name, and local listener change to db31522. So these are the only two changes that I have done. The etc aura tab also I have added the entry in etc aura tab on the new node. So that's also done. As you can see, that's also done. So now we are good to start. Uh, whether I have started our listener, I do not believe I have started my listener on the. I just created the listener, but I did not start it. So let's me start it, and that started successfully. So listener also started on node three. So that's good. The directories are created. So now what I will do is I will start up the the auxiliary or the new standby, the first second standby that I'm trying to configure in the no mod mode because we have to restore this particular database. So we, I'm going to start the database in no mount mode so that's what i am doing right now once the the database is started in no mount mode i'll go to the primary i'll go to the primary and i will connect the rman session so this is the rman session i will show you how the rman session looks like so rman target sys password at or api so the target should be your primary and auxiliary is your new standby the database that you are going to restore that becomes your auxiliary and the target database is your current primary the active database so if this connection gets successful then connected to auxiliary database aura which is not mounted yes perfectly because we have just did the startup no mount so that's correct and the target database aura so that's the current database so we have the RMAN session connected to the primary as a target database and auxiliary as the database that we are going to restore the second standby. We are going to use the duplicate target. I'll show you this command duplicate target database for standby from active database do recover SP file and I'm going to change the DB unique name or RT. I'm giving the command is standby. So I'm doing that and I'm running this particular command. So if the if this particular restore command is perfect then our database will be restored on the second standby or db3 so let me go to that location where this particular database files will be restored aura data slash slash aura so this is where it should restore and as i can see the control files and the system uh, data files have not at appeared which means the restore has not reached to that particular position so let's give it a minute it should not take more than one or two minutes so I will not pause the video. I will keep on talking for, for the restore to happen. First is going to restore the control files. Once the control files are restored, I guess it restored the control file. You can see, I'll go here and see whether the control file, yes, control files have been restored. The system data file is also restored. So now it's going to do the sysox users and sysox is also done. The undo is going to do. And finally, it's going to do the user's data file. So let's check and all the files are done and once the restore is completed it will say that duplicate db completed successfully so finish duplicate db so that's done so we are good the duplication also has happened so now what we are going to do is we are going to run this particular script this particular script will set up the we will create the standby redo logs then we will set the local archive dash mode we will set the second second log arc dash to to the primary will enable them we will set the pell client pell server and standby this is exactly same that we did for the stand second we will set the flashback on standby to the maximum performance and finally create p file from sp file and then what we will also do is alter database recover manage so we will start the mrp process and we will verify whether our database is in the data guard configuration so i what i have done is i have actually set up this particular script already i'll show it to you it's an exact copy of that particular script and that this particular script will be provided in the location so i'll show you this script how it looks like so so alter database we are going to create the standby control file add the srls add the local archiving add the remote archiving for the standby Enable the parameters, set the file client, set the file server. DG config, we will add all three unique names, all three servers. Standby file management to auto the performance, the standby database performance, maximum performance mode. 
shut down create p file from sp file recover and start the mrp process so this is what we are going to do so let me run this particular script is going to is going to take some time for this particular script to run so let's let's connect to let's first set our environment aura env aura sql plus as sysdba h give the script name so that's done once this particular script is done then this particular database would be configured for the data guard broker what i will do then is i will connect to this particular database from the sql we will do some transactions on the primary and we will see if we are whatever transaction we do on the primary whether those transactions are appearing on the second standby that we just configured so we will see that so let it let it finish the script so while that is running what i will do is like i will configure the new connection so this one is aura db3 so that's where connecting using sys password change it as sysdba save the password host name 192.168.1.103 port 1522 sid remains same aura test it success and connect it so basically what will happen is like that connection will get restarted okay it's already mounted i think it's done so now what i will do is like i will wait for it to open the new session the sql worksheet and i will run this particular command so give it a minute so i guess it has not opened the worksheet for some reason okay i manually created it so you can see rrt physical standby not allowed read only with apply so you know that's done now what i will do i will go to the primary i will connect to this particular primary so this is my primary and i will create some table so before creating the table let's test it whether it is there so select star from test 2 so i'm running this query on the primary and you can see there is no table so say since it is not there on primary it should not be there on the first standby it's not there and definitely it's it won't be there on the second standby as well so it's not there now what i will do is i will run all of these commands together so i'm going to create table and insert two records so done 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 and now you can see that table is there on the primary so let's run this particular command on the primary it was not there now we just created it two records are there standby yes we can see two records are there so first standby it is working fine now let's run the second standby and you can see it still says so the even though we have configured the data guard parameters on the third standby the right now the the whatever transaction that we did on the first it has still not appeared on the second standby and the reason is the first standby does not know we have not modified the dg config we have not modified the dg config on the primary so if i go and show you this particular parameter on the primary it does not know about this it does not know about the orachi at all okay why did it not work so that's done show parameter uh, okay that's fine and you can see the dg config is aura p and aura s it does not know about the new standby neither i have configured so what i can do is i can do this configuration using the sql plus command but i want to make my life easier your life easier so let's do this using the data guard broker so what i've done is i have already set up the script here is the script so this is the data uh, the script setup okay so i'm going to show you that particular script so how it looks like so what i'm what i'm saying is add database orachi connect identifier orachi made it as physical so i'm adding that particular so before doing that i'll just show you the configuration i'll connect using the dgmgrl and i'll show you the configuration we have only two databases aura p and aura s and when i run this particular command when i run this particular command then you should see orachi added into our configuration so let me do that so let me clear the screen and let me connect as the dgmgrl all of these commands will be there with you so you can always refer this particular command so i'm adding the database as orati maintenance physical 
show configuration i'm setting the rrt log transport mode static connect identifier enable configuration show configuration and i'm setting this particular parameters as well so let's i'm do, going to do that all together rather than instead of doing one by one so the script name is this at this okay before that i mentioned that i'm going to do the show configuration so let me show it to you so you we have aura p and aura s and we are going to add aura t in this particular configuration so let's run that does not exist so i'm not in the correct directory i am in the correct directory ls minus l cat okay cannot be accessed i'm not sure why it cannot access that particular file i am in that directory and even though i am in that directory it not work okay uh, i am not sure why that file the data guard broker is not able to access i'm going to just take all of these commands and put it together rather than you know i'm not going to figure out why it's not able to access that file i'm into object or rt this specific database okay fine uh, actually it did not get added the reason why that it did not get added and that's why all of this command failed because i did not clear this particular parameter that is some kind of this particular setting that we have to do so i'll do that here and then what i will do is i will exit clear ls minus l get this particular file copy all of these commands together clear dg mg rl and run them together and this time it should work the this is the culprit this particular parameter is the culprit in oracle 19c 19.3 i'm not sure it got fixed i do not have latest newer version i have not tested it with the newer version so you can see everything is done and rrt physical state standby database disabled so uh, configuration database so it's as actually the finally we enabled it and now you can see we have got aura s aura t and aura p so we have got three one primary and two standby aura s and aura t now the fast start failover is also enabled in the data loss in zero data loss mode and the configuration status is success now what what will happen if the primary goes down the fast start failover is enabled if the primary goes down the aura s will become the new standby what we what we have we have already tested that we have already tested that that aura p and aura s works so we will test do the testing with aura t so what i will do is i will actually kill the aura s as one of i will do the shut about so let me do that so let me go to Aura env i'm on node 2 set the environmental variable sql plus sctb i can either kill the i can either kill the pmount process or i can do the shut about so that's done i've done that so now what will happen is the aura yes it will complain as not available this one will show warnings and aura t will become the first target standby so that's what is going to happen so if i show you the configuration now if i show you the configuration now so exit clear show configuration you should see that aura s is not available okay it's not available oracle not available because we have done the shut about we have done the shut about on the aura s the first time by we have done the shut about so now what we are going to do is i'm going to I'm going to start it back so that it comes back into the environment. So I'm going to start it back. So let it come back in the environment. So I'm going to start it back the aura s. And once and I'll wait for what I will do, I will wait for this do not have any error or warning okay so let it get refreshed and what i will do so what i will do so oracle still not available so let's see it has started uh, it has yeah it definitely started so let's give it a minute 
and the status update is 79 seconds ago which means it's going to take some time and give it a minute and you can oracle not available so let's i'll do one thing instead of waiting i'll just say enable configuration okay and exit clear show configuration still it complete come is complaining about oracle being not available just give it a minute i i don't want any errors what i'm going to do next is i'm going to i'm going to shut down the aura p and you should see aura t becomes the new primary the uh, aura p becomes the new primary aura s will stay as standby aura p we will just shut it down so that's what i'm going to do so before doing that i will show you aura p is current primary you can see it here as well aura p is current primary aura t is standby and aura s is also standby so aura p is primary run the same command on the on the aura s which is standby and aura t which is also another standby what i'm going to do is i'm going to kill the pmon process for aura p and we will see aura t becoming the primary database okay so let me do that i'll connect another session and ps minus ef grep grep pmon and i'm going to kill this particular process kill minus 9 this and i kill the pmon for the primary database now what should happen is connected to idle instance oracle not available so that's definitely we got some errors because the primary we are on node 1 and for the node 1 i kill the primary now what i will do is i will go to the standby the third standby or aura t i will connect the dg mg rl session and i will see the show configuration and what should happen is as i mentioned what should happen is the the aura t should take over as the primary so just give it a minute and wait for one or two seconds or maybe five seconds just give it a minute the aura t should become the primary new primary so i will exit clear connect and do the show configuration and you can see aura t has become the primary database aura t was physical standby aura p has aura t has become the primary aura p is disabled because it needs to be restated and aura s is standby what i will do is i will go here i will set my oracle environment and sql plus as 6 dba and start up this particular database so it should become the it should become the standby this was our old primary okay so i've i've started it up so now let's verify so i uh, okay i did not even do this test okay so you can see all the transactions actually appeared so that's i i should have shown it to you but i missed it so now you can see the aura t the second standby has become the primary this is still the standby and this one which was our primary should become the this should become the standby so still it is saying primary not allowed mounted because we got this error you see this is the same error that we got when we did the switch over so because this was old primary now it cannot become the primary again because some other database has already become the primary so what will happen is like this will this database will get converted to so it says needs to be reinstated so now we'll see and it incorrect database role or rp incorrect database role because it is still it it was in primary so that's why the role is incorrect that's why we are getting this particular message but automatically that reinstate should happen we do not have to initiate the reinstate but if it does not happen we can always do it manually 
but let's give it a minute and wait for it so you can see the RRP has become the physical standby automatically. It was saying that it was incorrect database role. Now it has become the physical standby. Now I will go here and run this query. It was open mode was mounted. It should be now read with apply. So let's run this. And as you can see, read only with apply. So that's done. So now we got everything working. We got our we got our primary and we still have some warnings. Those warnings will eventually go away. It might take some time, but at the end, those warnings will go away and everything should look good. So this is how we added the third standby in our uh, data, data guard environment. Literally, not I, you, you, all that we did is we, we restored the database, uh, set some parameters such as DG config, the file client, file server, and Finally, using the data guard broker, so these are the commands that I ran. These are the commands that I ran to add the second standby in our data guard environment. And that's how I have configured the multiple standby data guard environment. I hope this particular video was useful. This was the third video in step by step setup of Oracle 19C data guard. If you like my channel, if you like my videos, do subscribe to my channel, do subscribe to, to my videos and I will see you in next video. If you have any comments, do pass in the comments and I will respond accordingly. Thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial. Bye-bye.